Hello everyone, welcome to finally the Albrex Aether Ray Sorcerer build video for Ultimate. Yes, Ultimate Capable Albrex Aether Ray Sorcerer. Um, ultimate Capable who has to finish the game still, but has gotten all the way up to um, near the end of the game. No idea if I'm going to be able to beat the Ultimate End Boss. Uh, we shall see. So... What I'm going to be doing... Yeah, and I'm starting him uh, naked. So, that's because the first thing we're going to do is look at the skills of the character without all of the plus skills, because there's actually quite a bit. Um, then we're going to Devotion, then we're going to go into Gearing, and then we're going to probably run the Steps of Torment up to Zarsa Zelen, because uh, that's an easy thing I can do in Ultimate while still talking. And... Uh, Otherwise, it'd be like a post post play commentary. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do all that in this video. Hopefully, it'll be under an hour. Hopefully. So, first things first. Albrecht's Aether Ray. We have both the ray itself and disintegration completely maxed out. Albrecht's Aether Ray costs a crap ton of money or crap ton of money, crap ton of energy when you get it maxed out and when you uh, have it at like the the 26, 16, 22, 12 setup. Um, which means needing a lot of energy regen, and that is why we have Iskander's Elemental Exchange maxed out. Uh, we are not actually gaining anything from the flat elemental damage, the energy leech, or the, um, conversion, but we need the energy regen, hugely, which is why this is maxed out. Um... I could do some testing to maybe drop it down back to one point and rely on the plus skills on it, but um, as much energy regen as you can get is necessary for Albrecht's Aether Ray, and this is a huge source of it. And when we put the gear back on, we will actually see um, just how much it provides and what it brings my energy to. Overload is at one point, because you only really need one point. You can only really afford one point. And Elemental Balance is at one point as well. Though Elemental Balance is something I'm considering leveling up by pulling points out of other things. And again, I'll I'll probably be doing another build video for this in the future with whatever upgrades I come up with. But uh, for now, it's a one-pointer. Mirror of Arachtis has five points in it because we want Mirror of Arachtis cooldown hurried up a bit, especially in Ultimate. Because Mirror of Arachtis does work in Ultimate. It is an absolute workhorse of an ability. It protects you, uh, it protects you, and it really protects you. So putting points into it to get it to about level 10 to 12, I think is absolutely necessary to get its cooldown to its lowest it can be. And it stops at 15, uh, 15 second skill recharge at level 12. So level 12 is something to shoot for. With the plus skills I have, it goes to 10, which I'm completely fine with given the other equipment I have. Mir uh, my Vin Sphere is at 10 of 12, and I'm actually considering taking points out of this, um, oddly enough, just so it stays around 12 um, with plus to skills, uh, and that'd be free points to put elsewhere. But yeah, 10 of 12 is a generally good thing to shoot for, because you'll get, um, I believe it's at 12 points, it jumps up to 30, so with even just plus 2 to it, you get, you get the uh, full 30% damage reduction bonus. Conversion only needs 1 point, and its benefits are pretty awesome. At just one point with plus to skills. And, uh, yeah. That's all you need for it. And then, uh... Inner Focus. Max it out. Because percent offensive ability is huge. Percent spirit is both damage and energy regen. Definitely, definitely an awesome passive. For pretty much anyone going into Arcanist. But for us especially because of the regen we need for Albrecht's Aether Ray. Arcane Will is a complete one point wonder still. And um, when you're leveling this character up, if you don't have a lot of like legendary gear floating around or um, you just have trouble with the energy regen associated with Albrecht's Aether Ray, I'd maybe suggest putting a few points in this and letting it proc because then you'll get energy regen. A lot of it. Like three doesn't sound like a lot, but um, it'd be like more than three if you had points in this. But it is a lot because it gets factored into your percent energy regen. And it can help you manage your resource a hell of a lot better. And then just respect them out as you go. Um, and get better gear. 
Nullification is another superstar on the support side of things, which is one point in it, you can take out enemy buffs. And enemy buffs in Ultimate, taking them out is huge. Both your, for your survivability, but also there are enemy buffs that make it harder to hit them. Or reduce their damage you, they take from you. So nullifying an enemy buff, or even like there are huge boss buffs, like Cronley's Sphere, just taking that out can make something like a joke. Or just more manageable. Uh, Mental Alacrity and Fabric of Reality, our other two passives, are completely maxed out as well. Mental Alacrity is really awesome because it gets your beam going faster and costing less at the same time. So uh, definitely, definitely maxing that out. Definitely want Fabric of Reality maxed out because of its percent Aether damage, which not only affects the beam, but it also affects Devastation, and it affects our two Devotion abilities. And speaking of Devastation, we have six points running Devastation. I might drop it down to five or even four, um, but you need to give it a little loving in ultimate just so it can deal appreciable damage. In, in veteran, it was completely a one point wonder. In higher difficulties, it needs just a little bit of a little bit of gas to really get it um, on the point of being like the bomb that you can drop to clear out a room. On the demolition side of things, canister bomb is completely maxed out still. I'm always going to keep it maxed out because maxing it out gives you more fragments. More fragments means more chances to stun with the concussive bomb transmuter. And it means more chances for aether fire procs. And enemies that are stunned by this just sit in that aether fire taking damage. So, um, yep, definitely keeping canister bomb maxed out. One point is in flame touched and one point is in temper. Now, I have vindictive flame maxed out. And this is going to be another one of those I'm going to test it in my own time even though the build's working really well right now, as to whether or not Vindictive Flame or Temper is a better defensive option. Because Temper gives you a lot of armor. Vindictive Flame gives you a lot of defensive ability. So I'm I'm on the fence about which would be better ultimately for the character. And uh, it's definitely something I'll play around with in the future. I'm just running this right now because it's been working so far. Um, and uh, respecking is expensive for my character right now. I added in flashbangs because flashbangs are awesome. And it's like I had the, the, the 11 points floating around and I was like, well, I could level up Mir more or Devastation. But then I was like, but I kind of want to keep enemies off me more. And in Ultimate, control abilities are huge that work. Control abilities are awesome. Freezes, stuns, knockdowns, confuses, terrifies. Um, just all of those are great. And the, for, the like 50-50 chance on confusing enemies, in addition to having their defensive ability reduced, in addition to having, you know, the chance of, you know, the slow with the chance of fumbling attacks and impaired aim, uh, make this a really awesome ability because you can also spam it. So it's great for keeping enemies off you while weakening them while providing more mitigation for you. So I do recommend pulling flashbangs into this build. So let's put our gear on. So with our gear, we're running a 2416 Albrex Aether Ray. If I get an empowered Aether Lord Signet, I can jump that up to 2616 and have a truly max out Aether Ray. But even at 2416, it deals a lot of damage. It's I just love seeing like 13,000 crits happen um, repeatedly to like one enemy. It feels awesome. It's just really great to have it at even 2416 and 2212. Um, yeah, I, I can't say more about it. It's just that, that cool and that awesome. Uh, Escondor's Elemental Exchange jumps up to 17, and that's 82% energy regen, which is a lot of energy regen for us, and definitely a necessity. Uh, Elemental Balance is at 7, uh, Overload is at 6, Mirror Rocktease jumps up to 10, and I could maybe take two points out of this and put it in here, but 10 feels really, um, fast on its cooldown. Plus, our equipment keeps the cooldown fast as well. Um, so, yeah. Mirror Varakti's 10 to 12. Almost almost at its uh, 12 to 12. Uh, Myvin Sphere jumps up to 18 to 12. And that's part of the reason I'm kind of thinking of maybe taking points out of it. But, I mean, again, that's something for future, like, future just tweaking of things. Uh, conversion. 6 of 12. Or 6 of 10. Jumping it up to 6 is a nice, nice boon. 
almost got inner focus to its ultimate rank. Just two more points on that, and it'd be just really great to have it at 22 12. Uh, Arcane Will and Nullification are at 6. Mental Alacrity jumps up to 5 or 15, and Fabric of Reality up to 17. Demolition side of things, we actually get a full 8 on Flame Touched, 5 on Temper. That's 16, 25, 17 because of our pants. Um, and then 5 on Searing Light. So before I go into gearing, though, I, well, actually, let's do gear next, and I'll do Devotion. So this set relies on the Clairvoyant set. And the Clairvoyant set, for anyone that doesn't know, the 4 set bonus, 10% chance of 100% skill cooldown reduction, means that there's a 10% chance, I think it's on on attack, it might be on hit, it might be on anything that happens. Um, your skill cooldown on an ability is going to be completely reset. Yeah, that's awesome. That means, like, you use Mirror of Arachtes, there's a 10% chance that it won't go on cooldown. Chaining Mirror of Arachtes together, really awesome. Same thing with Canister Bombs, really awesome. Same thing with Devastations, really awesome. See, the, the actual Aether Ray is not going to be gaining any sort of benefit from this, but all of our abilities except for Flashbangs are cooldowns, and resetting our cooldowns is really huge. That's just pure defensive ability, just defensive boons right there, from having them just constantly refreshing. Um, and you'll see this in action when we actually get going, but it does actually mean a lot, of, a lot more canister bombs and devastations and mirrors. Um, so that takes up the weapon slot, chest slot, the shoulders, and the head. And before I move on to my other gear, I'm going to point out that the Ascander's Unity set is a possibility here. Now it does take up the offhand and amulet slots, but it opens up the weapon slot. So it could be potentially a different way to build an Aether Ray Sorcerer. And that's one of those, like, I'm really going to have to rebuild the character to give that a proper test. And um, that would be definitely something to consider in the far future. Well, not far future. I mean, it'd be relatively far future, but... Um, yeah, definitely something to consider in the future, and um, I'll play around with it. But for now, Clairvoyant Set is doing absolutely awesome. <laughs> and there's no reason to change it, really, for me. So, Aldenar's Vanity is our offhand, because this is our other source of cooldown fixing. Um... 25% chance on our crits uh, will proc Ald Aldenar's Vanity the ability, and it's just minus 5 seconds to recharge time. This most often happens for me on Canister Bomb, because I think it's whatever is the first thing that went on cooldown gets affected by it, but I can't be sure about that. And I tend to throw Canister Bombs first, which means they would get affected by it first if that's the way it works. I mean, I'm just assuming that's the way it works. So, um, yeah, it's... It's awesome to have this ability on here as well, because we're basically managing our cooldowns to sort of keep our defenses up while, like, using our giant AoEs combined with our Albrex Aether Ray. Oh, and I will put up components as I go. Obviously, Wrathstone, um, totally the main component you'd want on your weapon. Oh, and I'm going to point out that the uh, elemental damage, offensive ability, energy regen thing at the bottom, I am going to switch that back to the Outcast Aether benefit or Aether Augment, um, I just need to get her back up to revered status. Uh, we need to be friends again for me to get that. Because um, we were enemies in Elite, so I could get her hat, and I got her hat, but now I have to actually get her as a friend again to get her Augments. But anyways, um, I'm running Imbued Silver here because my Chaos Res is actually my lowest resistance. Um, a, like, resistance that matters to me most uh, all these resistances are, are really high up, except Chaos. Like, 50 isn't terrible, but I would really want it more. I just don't know where I can get more of it. But, yeah, that's the reason we're running the Void Ward Aura, is for the Chaos resistance on it. But Imbued Silver also gives us Bleeding Resistance, which I have at 8%. I absolutely am considering an Empowered Combat Medics Mark, instead of a Badge of Mastery. Um, or the Wraithborn Pants, because they have Bleed Resist on them. Or even some other formation of gear that gives me bleeding resistance. Because that's my biggest weakness right now is bleeding resistance. So imbued silver as opposed to like a flint, enchanted flint. Um, I think is our absolute necessary uh, other weapon offhand component to go for. 
Oh, on the chest, we're running ballistic plating to get the 10% chance to avoid projectiles. Shoulders have a silk swatch. Again, bleeding resistance is important. Pierce resistance is important as well. And then the head, we have um, anti-venom cell instead of a rune stone because our elemental resistance is going to be built up by everything else and a rune stone would be redundant. So, yeah, the anti-venom cell for that poison resistance is hugely important. So our pants are leg wraps of the Tranquil Mind, a.k.a. the Time Pants. And plus three to inner focus and flashbang is really nice for us. And the time warp ability is really cool. So 100% uh, chance when hit, as long as that thing's not on recharge, we get this little sigil on the ground that's not actually that little. Um, and anything in that sigil is slowed down by quite a bit for one second. And then Ancient Armor Plate. It's our go-to for pants. So Aether Reach here... Um, I can't recommend these gloves enough for an Albrex Aether Ray build. And I would actually say, do whatever you can to get these damn gloves, because they're amazing. Um, beg, borrow, trade, steal, cheat them. I, I can't recommend the gloves enough. Um, they have everything in all the right places. Percent Aether damage, flat energy, two energy regen, casting speed, Aether resistance, which is an okay resistance, elemental resistance, which is hugely important, plus two to both the beam and to disintegration and that aether cascade ability it's going to be hard to notice in the field but it's basically like a chain lightning almost that deals aether damage tack some spell woven threads on there and you got an amazing pair of gloves um and they don't actually look too terrible either <laughs> kind of cool to have the aether effect on your arms um our boots are super defensive golem born greaves and uh they're great just to shore up a weakness in your defense which is armor um, and I could go for, I think they're like Wraith Walkers or whatever, um, which are like those cold Aether boots, but honestly, I, I want the defense, and these just give you a lot of health and armor and physical resistance and pierce resistance, um, and an ability that gives you more armor, so, um, and they have that tiny bit of move speed that, that boots have, and plus three to flame touch is actually a really nice little add-on for us, DPS-wise. Yep, so very bullish on the Golemborn Greaves. Uh, our belt is probably never going to get replaced by a Legendary, in all honesty, because plus three to Disintegration brought us up to the 2212. And uh, plus one to Albrecht's Aether Ray. I mean, it's our it's our Aether Ray. <laughs> um, now, if I got a good badge of mastery that had like a plus three to Albrecht's Aether Ray, then I would consider taking the belt off for another different defensor, defensier belt. Um... But yeah, Badge of Mastery, uh, you can craft these, and if they're really well crafted, you can get a really amazing ability going on. Specifically because it's the plus three and plus two, you can actually, plus three and plus two, you can actually get the, get like plus five to one ability. And that means you could open up all sorts of gear options elsewhere on a character. But um, like that's living the dream, and I don't ever think I'd, I'd get a plus five uh, badge of Mastery to Albrecht's Aether Ray. So, I mean, I'll, I'd settle for like a plus two on it. That would mean I wouldn't have to get a, a an empowered Aether Lord Signet. Um, so right now it's just the Myven Sphere Protection is the only reason um, I opted to slap this on this character uh, in place of another thing. Because it's actually a lot of total damage and offensive ability you get from it. Especially when Prowess is proccing. <laughs> so, um, our Relic is Iskander's Balance, and yeah, Aggravex Malice, I think it's called, would technically be a better one, but um, I really think that this is going to be, for an Aether Ray, um, Aether Ray character, this is your best option, especially if you're doing a Sorcerer because it's fire damage, um, but the skill energy cost reduction is, is definitely a benefit, next to plus one to all skills, and all the other stuff it provides. I mean, the ability is kind of, eh, whatever, but... Yeah, I think I would go Iskander's Balance over Aggravex Malos any day. Our amulet is a Peerless Eye of Baroneth. And this is one of the reasons I'm not immediately saying get Iskander's Unity. is because this amulet's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> it's crit damage and offensive ability and energy regen and total speed. And I don't care about the light radius. But also, with that, it's plus one to all skills. And you get this amazing ability that reduces enemy defensive ability. I mean, and offensive ability. So, yeah. Um, really loving this thing. 
And uh, yeah, it's like that's probably the main reason I wouldn't switch out to a Scounders Unity in all in all seriousness. Uh, rounding out things, our jewelry is an Eternal Band and a Mutagenic Sigil. I used to run two Aether Lord Signets, and that's why I'm at 2416. But I wanted these glove or gloves, these uh, rings in here, just because they are statistically a little better than two Aether Lord Signets at this point in the game. Oh right, um, Mark of Mogdragon for the health and movement speed. Another anti venom salve to bring our poison resistance up. Arcane spark, a uh, flat offensive ability and energy regen. Arcane lens, elemental damage, spirit, skill cost reduction, and then of course two mark of illusions for elemental damage, spirit, and energy regen. So I think that covers gearing. At twenty two minutes, okay. Uh, devotion. Now my devotion tree is kind of all over the place. And it's actually going to be story time now. <laughs> um, because in starting into Devotion, I started with the Crossroads and you pick up Aetherfire. Then I went and picked up the Hawk to pick up the Widow. And this is sort of the core for an Albrecht's Aether Ray character that's still using Aether damage. Because the Imp and the Widow are heavy Aether damage uh, nodes. And an Aetherfire is awesome. Especially on the canister bomb. Because enemies stunned by the canister bomb just sit in that Aether Fire. And then um, Arcane Bomb is great on the Aether Ray because it adds a tiny, tiny stun to it. But also adds an AoE and, you know, more Aether damage and a burn. So yeah, that's why I have those two set up in that way. And, um... Hmm. Excuse me, I needed water. And, uh... Yeah, it's just, they're your two go-to Aether abilities. And the Hawk is actually offensive ability, crit damage, and percent offensive ability, which is really nice. Um, so what I did initially, and what I said I was going to do in build 28 before going into build 29, was I was going to come up here to grab Eon's Hourglass to get Time Stop. And I have it at rank 10 of 10, which means I ran it for a really long time. And I was woefully unimpressed with it. This plus Spear of the Heavens, I was thinking, okay, these things are going to be like this retaliatory, you know, anything that dares to hit me will regret it. And um, they didn't at all. Uh, Spear of the Heavens is kind of a waste, in all honesty. It, uh, maybe for a, a Kalidor's Tempest character or some sort of weird druid, it might work. But, um... It was just so, so non-impressive. Just, I I dropped it almost immediately and put the points elsewhere. And an Aeon's Hourglass took me a while longer to get, get rid of. But um, the problem with it is it goes on cooldown when it procs. So if you have just like a skeletal warrior walk up and just do the eh, axe swing and he gets frozen during it, then you get hoarded, which happened a lot. Um... It made the, the ability just feel really not great. And that's sort of the problem with a lot of the defensive abilities. And I've tried a lot of them. Like, we have... Like, I put time in on Turtle Shell. Um, I think I actually even used uh, Tip the Scales a little bit. And actually Light of the Empyrean. And the problem I have with the defensive abilities is they don't do enough. And you have no control over them. So, like, Light of the Empyrean is like this tiny little AoE... And it was doing nothing for me. Because it had to be proc by melee attacks. So it's like it's not for my character. So it was just kind of a kind of a waste of using it. And then like same thing with Tip the Scales. I think it's more for a melee character. And like Turtle Shell. Like 2,000 damage absorption sounds cool and all. But like I have 8,000 health-ish. And like getting hit once takes about you know like 1,000 health away. So you're looking at maybe a hit. Or two, maybe, from Turtle Shell. And it procs when you hit a very low life. So a lot of these defensive abilities just weren't blowing me away. And that's why I'm not using any any sort of capstone right now in the um in the uh, the devotion um, affinities that I have. Because they're just not not worth it compared to like say taking Salamatra gets you a lot of defense. Putting three points in Ulo gets you a lot of resistances. Putting three points in Scales of um, Okama gets you a lot of health.
putting four points in Torgo here gets you a lot of health and armor. Maxing out the crane gets you a lot of defenses and resistances. Um, so just picking those up are necessary to survive in ultimate. And it is actually better to go for these sort of passive, less impressive, flash, less flashy things just so you can survive rather than actually picking up the flashy things. Um, and I think the only like close to a capstone thing I'm running is the behemoth here. And even that, I could probably pull, like, three points out of this, at least. Two or three points, because I'm actually not blown away by its ability, either. Because I can't control when it happens. Now, if that were chance on hit, chance on attack, it'd be awesome. It'd be like a free uh, combat medics mark proc, but it's chance when hit. Meaning, enemies hit me and I get a heal 50% chance of the time. So... That could be helpful and make me a little tankier, but because I can't control it, it becomes an, a lot less reliable. And it's not a liability, but it's definitely not something that too impressive. So ultimately, what I ended up doing was, with this and this filled out, uh, you end up with six, is it? No, you end up with um, three, six. Okay, so um, I then picked up so you end up with six Eldric, and I then picked up Scholar's Light to pick up Oakland's Lantern. And Oakland's Lantern is actually a really nice bit of offensive DPS statistics for a caster character who's running a caster weapon and a caster offhand, which I definitely have both. And then I actually put a point, which I still have in here, um, put a point in the Chaos Crossroads, pick up the Viper, which gives you Spirit, which is nice, um, some nice resistance things and percent offensive ability and that also allows you to pick up the behemoth and actually you can respect this point here and the behemoth will self-support itself um if it's complete but like i said i could possibly pull like three points out of here for another constellation um and potentially get a bigger bonus out of it and then um incidentally uh the way i got into law is oakland's lantern gives you two in a law and uh, that allowed me to pick up the crane, which is a huge, huge amount of resistances. And that gives you uh, seven into law. And that'll open up um, the ability to pick up uh, Targo the Builder and Ulo the Keeper of Waters and Solemn Watch Tower. And getting Solemn Watch Tower, or Solemn Watcher, sorry, allows you to pick up the scales of Okama. Um, and a few other things I got to point out. Um, if you need more elemental resistance, you can take a point off into Ulo here. Do not pick up her ability, though, because it is absolute garbage. Um, you can also get, like, a little more energy regen on the scales, which I've considered taking. A little more total damage. Um, yeah, for an Aether Ray character, this ability would be wasted, obviously, because it's shield-based. That's shield-based, and I mean, 24 defensive ability might be good, but I think we're running just enough to survive um, getting hit a couple times. Mostly, you're going in here for the health and armor, though. Because, I mean, 400 health and 5% health and then 8% health on top of it is just really nice. And then 5% armor is really nice as well. Um, and I think that just about covers my, my devotion right now. Um, I can't really think of any other abilities I want to go for in here. Um, maybe I could attempt to get into the Magi, but Fissure, again, it's only okay. <laughs> maybe put it on Flashbang so they can, like be a dps thing but i mean all in all honesty uh i think getting like your two one or two key abilities you're going for and then putting the rest in defense is the way to go for devotion um i mean for other characters i could point out certain things but this is the eighth array build video so we're just gonna leave it at that i think so i am gonna go into the steps of torment because it's kind of an easier ish place i can do while i talk so, um, I'll see you guys down there. Okay, here we are. And, uh, like I said, undead, easy to deal with. So, that's why I'm picking this area. Won't get bled to death in here because, you know, my bleed damage is garbage. Or my bleed resist is garbage, I should say. Um,
And, like, my Aether Ray guy used to be supremely tanky. And he kind of lost that because of his, uh, you know, advancement into ultimate. So you're probably going to see me get kind of hurt sometimes. Like, just right, like, in the beginning right there, just getting hoarded by ghosts. But you're also going to see him sort of just clear out tons of crap just very easily. Come on, hit me. Like, hit me while Mirror Baraktis is still up, please. <laughs> now, um, I forgot to point something out. And that is, uh, we're almost at 300 energy regen. And that's the energy regen we want to be at. Yeah. Less to count... Like, we do want to kind of counter the cost of Albrex Aether Ray. But Albrex Aether Ray... Like, no joke. Oh, come on. Albrex Aether Ray costs 1,000 damage per... Or, 1,000 damage. 1,000 energy per second. Yeah. We're not going to be countering that that energy cost I think at all ever so um what we want is enough energy regen to kind of mitigate the cost but in between mobs we want it reset that's where we want all of our energy regening to happen to keep us going now if things do get a little hectic and I am running out of energy the clairvoyant ability that the clairvoyant set provides, the clairvoyance voyance ability, <laughs> is like an absurd amount of energy regen on top of getting like 500 energy out of it. I think it'd probably replace um, elixirs of spirit on my bar if it wasn't for the fact that um, you auto pick up the elixirs. And thus the button always resets to it, kind of. Um, that skill's not so yeah, it's like canister bomb and devastation. Awesome for taking out rooms of things. I also tend to throw just a ton of flash bombs, even though I do it after, after the canister bomb, which is probably not the best way to do it. But um, I'm still new to flash banging, technically. What was the other thing I wanted to point out? Well, I'm down here. <laughs> I know I did the energy regen. I mean, even though the beam costs like a thousand a second, we're still beaming for a really long time. So you've probably noticed already that I am getting those procs from uh, from the set and from Aldenar's Aldenar's vanity are happening quite a bit. So yeah, this would be a time for boop. Now that just like instantly refills our energy, and like we can beam almost for free with this because the uh, actual clairvoyance ability jumps our energy up to a thousand. No joke. It's really awesome. Where is he? There it is. <laughs> um, also, I'm using I'm using the uh, Gaze of Baroneth here. I just want to show that off. So our energy regen is, you know, 293. Yeah. 1800 energy regen for, what is it, 5 seconds? Yeah. That's 5 seconds of basically free beaming. So not an insignificant advantage there. Um, I've also kind of noticed that flashbangs, for some reason, trigger Aldenar's, or at least trigger the 10% chance of 100% cooldown. Um, it, they just seem to proc it a lot. Or that may just be me seeing that. <laughs> um... And I believe Blackwater cocktails the ability that, like, in a weird, weird way I've considered picking it up. Because I hear it actually procs things a lot. 
So maybe throwing out like even a one point Blackwater cocktail. Um, like, like would maybe be a good way to game the clairvoyant set. I don't know. Just kind of thinking of things now. It's like the warp fire sword. Or a uh, caster, caster weapon, I should say. Because it's a dagger. Um, has like 50% cold damage converted to fire. And I'm like, how could I work that into this? I'm like, well, it'd probably require Kalidor's Tempest to really get it going. Okay, so here we have two very quick devastations combined with three very quick canister bombs and the enemies are gone so I have the clairvoyance that's awesome I'm also kind of doing a little loot whoring even though I'm recording a build video right now because this character is out of money like, respecking costs combined with crafting co costs just drained his bank account. So, skeletal priests, we killed them all. Skeletal warlocks, we mostly killed them all. Going out of my way to take those guys out is actually kind of a important thing. Yep, so we got that nice double bomb in there. Oh, look, a triple bomb. Oh, look, another bomb. <laughs> kind of, I kind of love it, honestly. It's almost like having, uh, what is that, Ulizen's Chosen, but not. Um... No heroes, though. I was really hoping we'd at least get one hero on the way down here. So we definitely want to hit a skeletal monstrosity with our gaze of Baronath. And some flash bombs before it gets to us and almost kills us. Because skeletal gargantuans and monstrosities are really strong. Like, they can easily one-shot you strong. And I'm just like, come on, give me a hero already, jeez. That's the only reason I went down there, is like, maybe there was a hero in that room, but nope. I gotta show off my sweet moves. Yeah, the other reason I'm down here not in like the end game area is because end game there's just a lot of crap that's heavily resistant to aether damage and requires like full attention to actually bring down. Yeah, I believe Clairvoyance, I don't actually have an easy-to-reach button right now for it. So I do have to move the mouse down there to click it. Yeah, I definitely get to save on the uh, Elixirs of Spirit with this setup. Oddly enough, even though like I have the, probably the most expensive per second ability in the game. Well, at least we'll get to kill Zarsa's Ellen. That's something, at least. That 
That is probably the first elixir spirit I have had in a really long time. So in here, we're we're gonna run up and just gonna pot shot him for a couple seconds. And then we're gonna run down here and boom and flashbang, 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 bomb, flashbang, 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 flashbang. Devastation, shield. Let's make sure we kill everything down here quickly. It's all gone. Easy. Take out his aura. Now we can just sit here and burn him down like he's nothing. Because, I mean, he really... Like, we just make sure we keep Gaze of Baranath on him and Pop Mirror of Arachtes as needed, and he is gone. So, real quick, I'm actually going to run down here before signing off, because I kind of want to get a normal enemy hero in this. I want to see if there's any that's spawned up here. Muzalek would be hilarious. Hilarious and probably difficult and kind of a jerk. That skill's not ready. Oh, I don't think we're getting that hero we want. Well, we're getting someone. Honestly, a skeletal monstrosity hero. Whoa, I didn't mean to walk forward there. Oh, come on. Now we're, now we're just going to get hosed over because I moved forward when I didn't mean to. It's like, not the hero I wanted, but the hero I deserve, I guess. But again, like, 90% of this is going to be me just, like, kiting around a little bit. Not wanting to get hit by his claws again. And him teleporting a little bit forward. Yeah, the shrine that was down here. Not very fun. <laughs> just, like, ten of those stupid things popping out. So yeah, I think that'll about cover the Aether Ray build video. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you guys next time for uh, probably just more gameplay videos of uh, Elite. I think I'm still on. And I think I'm going to be doing a Battle Mage video, build video, sometime soon as well. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys then.